Hey guys, and welcome to this session on Pathlib in Python. And in this video, I wanna go through a range of different use cases aimed more specifically at someone who's never used Pathlib before. So I'm gonna show you how to do some really simple basic operations, the sort of thing that you might have been using OS for previously. One thing that's worth noting, which differs Pathlib away from OS, is its OOP approach. So most things evolve around using the path object here. So you might define this as some kind of path and then do dot and then some method name at the end. It's quite a lot different to how OS does stuff where you might be importing specific functions from that module and using them all differently. Pathlib kind of always evolves around defining some kind of path object and then doing something with it. So it's a bit different in how you work with it. One of the interesting things about Pathlib is that it's platform agnostic. So what I mean by that is suppose you constructed a path using the OS module, um, because of the difference in slashes between Windows and Linux, you're going to have to do it separately on each machine. Whereas if you use Pathlib and construct a path using its special operator, which is this, we'll show it later, Pathlib doesn't really care what machine you're on. It'll pick it up and it will construct the path correctly based on the machine that you're using, which is really good. Now let's kick things off nice and simply. Uh, I'm going to be taking this as if this is your first time seeing Pathlib. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually get this imported. So we can say from Pathlib, import path. And now the first thing we're going to do is define two path objects. So I've got my directories here to the left here. Let's see what I've got. I've got a text file. So I'm going to quickly copy and paste this one. So I copy the path here. So let's do my file is equal to. And what we do is we then call this path object here. And in a set of speech marks, just simply pass in this path here. Let's also set up a path to a directory. So I'll do the same thing, path, pass this in like this. And for this one, I'm gonna take this my directory here. I created this just for the video and it's got a simple text file inside it. Let's print off one of our objects. So if I was to go ahead and print, uh, let's print off my directory. So I'll print off my dir and we can see we get, there we go, nice and simple. Uh, let me print off the type. Let's just see what this actually comes out as. And we should see that it's a path object here. Now a very common operation done using the OS module is checking that directories or files actually exist. It's a fairly common thing you might want to do. You might want to say like, okay, if this file exists, go ahead and do X, Y, Z. Uh, we can do the same thing here, except it's a bit simpler. So if I do print my file dot, let's do exists here. Let's just check this, run this again, we get true. Let's switch out file for dir here and we'll hit run again and we get true for both here. So this exists method doesn't really care if you're passing it a file or a directory. If it's either and it exists, then it's fine. Uh, let me change this here for a second uh, and we'll change this back to my file. I would now expect this to be false because that no longer exists. You can go one step further. If I clear the screen here, one thing you can do is rather than just saying, does this arbitrary thing exist? We can ask Pathlib to say, is it a file or is it a directory? So let me take this here and bring it down here. So this will be true for uh, say file and directory here. What you can do is rather than saying exists, we can do is underscore and VS Code has nicely brought these out, is file. And you can probably guess what this is gonna do. Make sure I close this correctly. So this will be true for, um, let's say, is a file, basically. So if you pass a directory here, it's going to be false. Uh, we'll run this. We get true. Let's switch out file for my directory. Bear in mind, this is pointing to a directory, not a file. And we get false, as expected. Uh, what we can do now is show the counterpart. So let's take this, bring this to the line below. We'll switch out my file for my dir. And then you guessed it, you can do is dir like this here uh, so I can change just for true for is a directory you know these might seem fairly trivial fairly basic things and if you're a programmer who's working with your file system quite a lot these are fairly kind of commonplace things and pathlib makes it really easy you can simply say here's my path and then you can use exists is file is dir this isn't even like an exhaustive list here these are three that I tend to use fairly commonly um, almost on like a daily basis, if I'm honest. My job kind of entails with working with lots of file systems. We use Pathlib very heavily, and these are just three nice, simple things which you're gonna be doing all the time, and Pathlib makes it nice and easy. 
Now, whilst we're on the context of kind of checking files, one thing that Pathlib can do is kind of tell you if files are readable, writable, and it can give you the information about said files. So just as an example, if I do ls alrt, um, we can see permissions here. So we can see if things are readable, writable, we can see who owns them, etc. Um, Pathlib can kind of use that as well and give us it in a nice kind of readable way. So let me get rid of this just for a minute. And what we'll do is we'll do a bit of an examination on this file here. So first of all, let's set up a simple if statement saying if my file dot is, uh, let's do is file here. Bear in mind, this could be done the same with exists or I might wanna be checking a directory as well. I'm just gonna use this one just as a, a kind of proof of concept. So we'll do some dot dot dots as a placeholder. And then we can say here, print uh, file does not exist. Okay, uh, now what I can do is Bear in mind I've set up my pathlib object here is I can now call some methods on this and then these methods can then give me information back about this file. The main method I'm concerned with is one called stat. So let's just quickly print this off here. We can do print my file dot stat. Now this returns an object which then has various attributes about it. So if I run this, we get all of this stuff here. And suppose we're interested in its size. If I squeeze this to the left a little bit, we can see ST size here. That's because yeah, there's nothing in it. Uh, let's just quickly write hello. Now there is some stuff in it. Uh, we'll rerun this. And now stat should tell me, there we go, a mighty five bytes. Cool. Now I'm gonna use this attribute here and I might also use the M time. This is the modified time of this file, and this is a Unix timestamp. So I'll quickly set this up. I'll speed it up and see what we get. Okay, running this, we can see we have a file size of five. Um, we can put bytes there. And we can see our modded time. There it is, a nice little timestamp for us, which is nice. So Pathlib, really simply, just by accessing the stat method, and then from the stat method, we then look at the st size attribute and the st m time or modified time attribute. Just a nice way to give you a bit of information about a file. Um, coincidentally, one thing I tend to use this for is ordering things in a directory by their modified time. So it might be worth showing you that. Let's remove this here, remove this, remove this, and we'll keep this like that there just for a second. And what we'll do is we'll add in some more files and we can actually use this as the key to a sorting function to sort the things by their modified time. Okay, and how we're gonna do this is by using another of Pathlib's really cool methods called iter, D-I-R. And let me show you what this does. Uh, let's say files is equal to, and this is a directory which now has file in D-I-R, file one and file two. So I can simply say my D-I-R dot iter directory, and we can see it gives back a generator. So let's see what it does. So we can see it will iterate over files in the directory, doesn't give any result for the special paths dot and dot dot. So you know, if I do ls alrt, you can see it's got these dots here. This dot refers to the current directory. This refers to the one above it. So I've only really got in this directory, these two here. So let's clear that screen. And this directory though has one, two, three different files in it. Um, if we print our files here, because this is just a generator, we need to really cast it to something ideally. So we'll run this. And yeah, there we go, we see that. Let's make this into a list. It shouldn't really say cast, let's make it into a list. So this will kind of unpack all the things and put it in there for us, which is good. And we can see we've got file two, file one, and my file in dir.txt. Let's make this a bit clearer for us and we'll iterate over this directory. Okay, so we can see file two, file one, file in dir.txt. Now what I might wanna do is take this and sort these different things. Now what happens is when you do this here, this is basically given back a list of pathlib objects. And recall that a pathlib object has this about it. So we can say for a pathlib object, do stat, do st.mtime. That means that we can say, sort these objects with a key and that key can be the modified time. So what I might wanna do, um, you know, just because there's three files, I can do it as a separate variable, it's fine. Um, so we can say sorted files, and the key I want to do this by is as follows. So we'll say lambda, um, let's do f for file, and we can say basically this, f.stat, 
um, time here. Bear in mind these all need to be pathlib objects. So with this done, now let's go over sorted files instead. So we'll do sorted files, I uh, will hit run, and we get file in dir, file two, file one. Um, let's go ahead and modify this. Let's do one, two, three, and let's run this again. And now see how that one's at the end here. Um, let's now do file two. Just, just, just. Let's do some stuff and let's try that. And now file two is at the end. So it's just a nice, simple way of like ordering files. Um, in practice, I can tell you where I've used this before. We had a program which basically had to watch a directory and it had to basically open the most recently modified file and do some stuff with it. Um, and this was just a nice, simple way of doing it. We use pathlib to well, first to find the path, we then use iter dir to say, okay, now give me all the stuff in that directory. We then used a key and a sorted function. And for the key, we said, right, now for each pathlib object, call the stat method and do it by its modified time. And yeah, pathlib makes it kind of nice and simple, easy to do. Of course you can do it with OS, but I think pathlib just makes it really nice and simple. I mean, we don't even need this over two lines. Suppose you wanted to do this here, you could. Let's do that with this. And there we go, it's a nice simple one-liner. We'll get rid of this here and there we go, exactly the same thing. Nice simple one-liner using pathlib, using key and using a lambda as well. Seeing as we were on the topic of text files earlier, we can use pathlib to read stuff from a file and also write stuff to a brand new file. Weirdly, pathlib doesn't really have an append mode in files, which is kind of interesting, but you can use it to write brand new files from scratch and create it. You know, it's kind of similar to opening a file in W mode, um, but you can use it to also read stuff as well. So let's say contents is equal to my file dots, we're going to do read, you could do read bytes or read text, uh, read text is fine. And just like how opening a file normally, you specify an encoding, you know, it, we don't have to in this case, it's going to be default to UTF-8 anyway. Uh, we can just keep it as it is and do read text. And then we could say print off our contents, there you are. Hit run, and we have yo in the file, and is it in there? It is indeed, but a little line break as well. Get rid of the line break, and there we go. There's our contents. Um, writing to file, it's kind of the same as well. So let's suppose, if I go back to this, this has yo inside it. If I now did write text, it's going to basically nuke this file and put some new contents in it. So we'll do my file um, dot write text here. And there we go, we can see it takes in data, which is an STR, you can pass in your encoding as well. Uh, let's just say this here. I don't know where that kind of came from, but you get the point. Uh, there we go, let's nuke the file and put some new stuff in as well. So using read text or write text, we can call those both on a pathlib object and pathlib will quite happily write data or read data from a file. It doesn't just have to be a .txt, that's just purely for this example. Now one of pathlib's really interesting points is its ability to make new directories. Uh, so say for example, I take this guy here. Uh, I don't want to make some new directories inside of this. So let's call this base. Uh, we'll then do path, and uh, let's do this here. Uh, and let's now do folder one is equal to, oh, let's do files. Uh, let's do folder two, no, folder two, like that I should say, is now equal to subfiles here. What we can then do is then say, take this, concatenate this, and then concatenate this. Now at the beginning, we talked about pathlib being agnostic. It doesn't matter if I'm on a Windows or a Mac machine or Unix, Linux, whatever. Uh, let's now do, full path is equal to base. And we use this weird like forward slash operator like this here. So we'll do folder one dash folder two. Cool, looks good. Uh, now let's print off our full path. Hit run. And there we go. So see, mine's automatically put in the forward slashes here. If I were a Windows machine, these would be done as backslashes. Uh, we can see, does it exist? Let's do exist here. I should say no, because it yeah, that, well, I hope it doesn't exist. False. So now we can go and tell pathlib to go ahead and make this. So given that this is a pathlib object, pathlib object has a method called mkdr, similar to how you do in like a Unix system. And what's interesting is that we can actually give it a few options to tell it how to behave. Uh, so if I just run it kind of as it is, that's clear. And it tells us that there's no such file or directory here. Now the reason why is because I need to pass in parent 
equals true. Now let's run this again. And now it's fine. Now what this means is parent equals true here. Basically it's saying I could make this, but because this was sat before it, this is basically like a parent folder to this one. So if you do parents equals true, if your folder was like mine is, like this one existed, but we needed this and then this inside this here, parents equals true will basically make the entire path. Whereas if you know, by default, it's set to false like this. Uh, if I delete files, I mean, you can see already some files is there. If I did delete files, move to trash and hit run again, it's kicking off because it's saying, I've tried to make this, but this plus files isn't here. So stick this as true, path label then come along and go ahead and make the full path for you. If we run it again, we get an error saying file exists. So what you can do is do exist, okay, true, clear, hit run, and this kind of like alleviates the error. So, I mean, this depends on if you want the error to happen or not. You might be happy with like this existing and just kind of moving on passively. Um, suppose you're working on a program that is adding stuff to a folder. You might want to do a check to make sure that the folder's there. If so, you could then just go ahead and do this. Uh, this would of course verify and make the folder. You could then maybe check on that using isdir later on. But I mean, look how simple that is. We don't have to do any if statements to say, do you already exist? We haven't got to check if the parents exist. We can simply say, make this directory, make the parents if we need to. And if this folder already exists, yeah, don't kick up a fuss, just go ahead and do it. And there we have it guys. That is my super simple introduction to what I think are the Pathlib essentials. Um, Pathlib really is a tremendously wonderful and useful library. I've only really kind of scratched the surface of this here. Uh, feel free to comment below if you have any kind of favorite tools, features, or hidden tips about Pathlib. I'd love to know them. And if this is helpful, feel free to comment if you want to see a second video. I'd happily make a more advanced and complex video on some of the more kind of interesting use cases of Pathlib. Cheers for watching, guys. Hope you all have a great week, and see you all in the next video.